one. Hi, everybody, and welcome to A Conversation with Friends. Let me just get uh, people in the chat room to refresh so they can hear us as well. Let me know when you all have sound, people. First off, thank you very much for uh, to Alex for agreeing to come on my show. Uh, Alex, you're in Australia, right? Correct, 110% from Australia. Okay. And you guys are going through a heat wave right now, if I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you know what? I will correct you there. I don't even want to know about it. I don't even want to talk about it because it has been horrible. We've been having like 40 degree heats. Um, you know, the last few days have been 40. It's been like 46. Um, and now today is like 33 degrees. So we've gone through a massive heat wave because, you know, it's summertime over here. And then all our friends who are from the UK and everything like that, it's all snowing over there. I'm like, really? You know, yeah. but it's been it's been hot, so I completely feel. What about your weather down there? My weather is tush freezing cold. You want to make sure that all your cheeks are, are very well covered. Right now, we're actually, we're in a warm front. We're minus four Celsius. But today, wow. um, gosh, today, this morning when I woke up, it was minus 16. And then we got another, I'd say about, Two, three inches of snow. Okay. Yeah. So this is like, you know, minus 26 without the wind chill is, is might nippy. So <laughs> you gotta keep everything all well warmed. So like we could switch, you know, I'll send you some chilled air and you can send me some warm air and, and we'll be really happy because yeah, I don't well, do cold well. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think you want 114 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm a ginger, so, like, my favorite seasons are spring and fall. So, but, f you know, five minutes in the sun, I look like a cook lobster. So, I just, you know, I don't, I don't do the heat and I don't do the cold well. Mind you, it heat's a lot better. All I just got to do is stay still. And yeah. Stop you know, it's it's that time working. to just chill and relax. Yes, exactly. Well, first off, let's um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. I think we everybody's got good sound. Cool. Tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself. All right, beautiful. So basically, hello to everybody. Um, hello to everyone in the chat room and everybody's uh, watching. My name is Alex. Basically, how I work and operate is my psychic medium. So what that means is, you know, yes, I'm able to connect to your past loved ones, essentially. So as a medium, I'm able to see, I'm able to feel, I'm able to hear spirit. I'm also able to connect to them. So, you know, a lot of people that I say to many people is that we're very intuitive. Everyone from a young age and every soul is always um, able to connect to some sort of degree within that. And, you know, you'll hear later on throughout, you know, the um, radio show, you know, I'll talk a little bit about my journey and everything like that. But, you know, it wasn't until a young age where I started to see spirits and everything like that. Now, if you are wanting, you know, to see spirits, you know, definitely you can. But for me, at a young age, it was something that was quite scary because you don't know who's here. You don't know what's this. And, you know, for me, it was something that I had to learn and explore, basically. Um, so, you know, I do tarot readings. I do, you know, numerology. So I'm a numerologist. I'm a Reiki master teacher. So I teach, you know, Reiki. Um, I've taught many students and I've just had a few upcoming classes that I've done here in um, Melbourne, Australia, because I'm located in Melbourne, Australia. Um, you know, it's been one of those journeys where, you know, so many amazing things have happened. But for me, as a medium, what I love to do is really help people in terms of their finding their guidance, finding their directions in terms of where they need to go. So if people are at that crossroads or at that, that, at that path, you know, do I go here, do I go there? Then what I do is help you with what you need to know. But realistically, you know, um, mediumship is my forte and, you know, the psychic component. So um, I'm not too sure if everyone knows the difference between a psychic and a psychic medium. Um, whereas, you know, being a psychic, you're able to connect to, your, you know, your past, present, future. You're able to do tarot readings and all that. But it's very rare to have a psychic medium because, you know, if in order for you to be a medium, you need to have the psychic components and you need to have that ability to have that mediumship as well. So, you know, later on for our discussions, Darlene, we'll talk a little bit about, you know, everything about me and, you know, whatever we need to talk about. Um, but, you know, basically, you know, that's my forte, you know, 
at a young age and, you know, um, you know, it's something that picks up and now it's, you know, me booming and, you know, meeting so many different people, you know, it's truly an amazing experience. So um, that's basically what I need to say with that one. <laughs> Very good. Uh, now you can breathe because I don't think you took a breath during that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have put your links into the chat room. So if anybody wants to get a hold of Alex, he's on Facebook, Alex Morgan Psychic Medium. And he's got www.alexmorgan.com.au slash Alex dash story slash. Very good. So, um, all right, there was. Okay, first off, you're 19 yes. years old. I am. I'm 19. I'm a young baby. Hey, he just, just you could be you could be one of my children. You need, you're even younger than my youngest boy. <laughs> Goodness gracious! But um, when you were growing up, um, how did your family react to, or did your family also have other people in your family also have the abilities slash gifts? Well, beautiful, great question. So basically, you know, it wasn't really until the age of sixteen, or I think about. 15, 16, where I started to explore the psychic or the spiritual journey. Um, you know, at that time, you know, I, you know, I went through bullying, I went through depression, I went through suicide, I went through, you know, changing to nine different schools, you know, I was bullied for being the fat kid, everything like that. So I was at that crossroad of trying to work out where do I really need to go. So a few friends showed me, you know, Alex, you know, here's some crystals and here's some tarot cards, have a look and blah, blah, blah. And it basically all happened there. Um, so when I first started saying that, you know, um, you know, what am I doing? You know, do I, you know, do readings? Do I do this? Do I do that? Because essentially I wanted to help people. So I didn't quite mm -hmm. know what direction I was going in. And so anyway, the, cut the long story short, basically, um, you know, I was, you know, at that time where I said, you know what, mum, dad, I want to do psychic readings. Now, um, at this time, you know, he was basic, uh, they were like to me, well, if that's what you want to do, they'll support you. I'll support you. I will give you everything you need. And essentially that's what they've done. You know, they supported me with what I need. Now, me, I'm a single child. So I do, I, I do have that luck, you know, I can get things given to me, but it depends on, you know, what the, what it's for and everything like that. I was never a spoiled mm -hmm. child. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I've always, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I've always got that support and that love from the no matter what. So mum supports me. Mum comes to all my expos, everything like that. She helps book clients. Now she's my receptionist, basically. Um, you know, dad's dad, you know, he's an amazing man. Um, you know, he'll support me or whatever. But mum used to be a nurse back in the day and she used to see a lot of things. And what I mean by a lot of things is that she's seen a lot of different spirits, a lot of different entities. Um, you know, she was basically a PCA worker, which is a personal care assistant. So she worked in nursing homes. She worked in palliative care, which is like resting in place. So where, you know, you go into aged care facilities of where, you know, people are, you know, um, basically don't have long to live. So you're assisting them, you're looking after them. And mum used to tell me all, you know, her different stories and stuff like that. So I was always fascinated. So you could say that, you know, it's been passed down within the family line, the generations and everything like that. But um, it wasn't really until my grandmother passed away that a lot of things started to uh, obviously, you know, not quite make sense with me in terms of what the hell is going on. <laughs> um, so, you know, it was a scary time. Like, let's be honest. The first time you see a spirit, it's like, hang on, am I going nuts? Am I going insane? Who the hell is this? You know what I mean? So <laughs> it would have been, it, it was scary, you know. I, I used to see, like, salt lamps flicker in my bedroom and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, that ain't normal. That ain't that's that's some scary stuff and so you know um mum obviously seen them she felt them dad you know he does have that sense he is quite you know i say he's psychic he's very cautious with people and what i mean by that he's very particular even mum is and particular in a way of you know i don't like that person you know you can call him judgmental you can call him you know critical you can call him whatever but it's that sense of, you know, you don't even understand this, darling. It's that sense of that gut intuition. If mm -hmm. you don't feel like you like someone because their energies and stuff like that, then you get that weird feeling or that vibe type thing. So my parents have always got a vibe. You can always say, you know, it's the parents' instincts or whatever. But I do honestly wish that sometimes I should have listened to their vibes and <laughs> what they were feeling. 
because it's like, okay, I wouldn't have gone through that exact moment, but it's that learning curve. So mum used to have um, apparitions um, see her, like she used to see apparitions, she used to see like shadow people, um, she used to see like, you know, this, I remember this one particular moment where she used to work, she had this, um, she was doing night shifts. So night shift would be basically like, I think it was nine o'clock at night and finish at seven o'clock in the morning. And for her, she used to see this particular lady sitting on a couch and she had her hair all done up in like a ponytail, braids and everything like that. And mum used to say, you know, hey, go to bed, you know, it's time to go to bed because she was dealing with, you know, people with dementia and Alzheimer's and stuff like that. And, you know, this lady would just stay there. And as soon as she turned around, the, the apparition went and she's like, okay, what the hell's that? So from that time, you know, spirit has always been in the family. It's always been that very strong connection. So, you know, they understand what I do. They support what I do. But at the stage of me coming out and saying, hey, everyone, I'm a psychic medium or, hey, I'm a psychic, you know, not many people believed in what I'd done. So at that time, you know, I had to prove myself to many people. Um, but, you know, they've got that faith and they've got that connection, so they understand exactly where I come from. So that's that's basically that story, basically. Okay, well, uh, we have a guest, we have a guest in the chat room, Julianne Long, and she says she can verify everything. Alex, you're amazing. So, uh, hi, Julianne. Sorry, I, I'm not good at typing. I can't do, I can't <laughs> multitask. Type and listen at the same time. Sometimes it just doesn't work. So, Julianne is, is, uh, in the chat room and she says you're awesome. So, Thank you so much, funny. Julianne. Appreciate it. <laughs> Um, one thing that, um, I picked up when you were, when you were talking is mm -hmm. that you were bullied and you went through a depression. Now, as a, as a child, even though you still are, compared to me, um, everything you went through, the, the bullying and the depression and all the anxieties that you went through, do you find that helps you now with your clients that makes you like, I know, we're all empathetic and in a, to a certain extent, but do you feel that what you went through helps you to help your clients now as well? Aside from just, uh, aside from just, uh, spirit connections, but do you feel what you went through is like when somebody comes to you and says, I'm going through this, is there, there's there, is there a connection that if you can sort of, like I said, empathize with what they're, what mm. they've been through, but then you connect spirit and spirit and, you can kind of sort of tag team. Yeah, hundred percent. Great question. Well, you know, for me, darling, you know, I basically grew up. You know, I didn't know much about life. I didn't know much about anything. You know, let's be honest. From the age of you know one to two, you learn how to crawl, you learn how to walk, you learn how to talk. You know, mm -hmm. all those basic fundamentals. You start your very first. I don't know what you guys have over there, but we call it you know kindergarten, or when you learn you know yeah. basically how to group and socialize with people. Then you start primary school. You learn your ABCs and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wasn't until the end of primary school where I started to a lot of things because I was different from everyone else. I had chubby legs, I had a belly, I had this, I had that. And, you know, I was known as the fat kid. So, you know, going through all those different parts, moving to nine different schools, bullied for 11 years, um, on the verge of suicide and depression, you know, I basically hated my life. I wanted to, you know, I'm going to be sensitive here, but I hate, I wanted to kill myself basically, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, the typical depression and everything like that, it does. And I was at that point where I didn't know exactly what life was anymore. And for me, you know, I could feel in that energy, you know, that negative environment in that black hole that all you want, all you're thinking about is, you know, the negative side of things and what this person said or what that person, you know, done to you. So I was bashed, I was beaten, I was pushed into lockers, I was everything like that as you could imagine um you know really i was a tortured soul and you know when and 2009 lost my grandmother she passed away started high school and you know basically life was horrible and it wasn't until 16 that i really started to change everything but you know in saying that you know yes I have that connection now of actually seeing, you know, what life really is. You know, I've seen life, I've seen death, I've seen everything like that at the fingertips, but it makes me more connected to someone because in that environment when someone's getting bullied and I didn't quite know that I was, you know, yes, I could play the victim card, you know, and, you know, yes, I was the one like asking questions. Why me? Why this? Why that? 
And we don't really know what happens in a bully's life, let's be honest. And, you know, saying that, you know, you could have, let's say, for example, you're getting bullied. That person who's bullying you, they could be in a, an affair, in a family environment that's going through depression, that's going through, you know, financial stress, that's going through a lot of concerns and everything like that. But how I'd say it, I'd just say it for my own self, you know, I'm the one getting bullied, I'm this, I'm that. And it wasn't really until the last few, well, actually the last four or five years ago, until I actually been like, you know what, Alex, you know, yes, you are the conduit of getting bullied. But you also need to pay into consideration of, um, you know, what other people are going through. And that was the hardest part for me because, you know, yes, I was in that environment. But what happens if, you know, I was the one who was going through that negative environment and that person was going through their own negative aspects as well? What happens if I was a conduit for them to release their problems? And, mm -hmm. you know... For me now, it's like I start to realize that everything has a story. Everything has, you know, there's always, there's always three truths in the, in this, every situation. You know, there's two opinions, but somewhere in the middle, there's always the truth. Yeah. And so, you know, I learned all about that. So now when I have clients who are going through, you know, things like that, not only clients, but, you know, people outside of my work, my friendships, my family life, everything like that, I can pick up on things without, you know, being intuitive. It's like, you know, I can give them the guidance. I can give them, you know, the empathic ability because, you know, when you're going through that environment, it's hard, it's negative. And, you know, it allows me that chance to, you know, really help people, you know, even if I have to share my story to them, just so they know they are not alone with what they're going through. You know, it doesn't have to be school bullying. It can be work bullying. It can be family bullying, everything like that. You know, it's all connected in a way. But um, for me, it's more like, you know, I find with clients, you know, doing anything like that, it's really changed it up a lot, particularly. And it's something that, you know, it's not easy when we're going through stuff like that, especially depression or suicide or, you know, anxiety and stuff like that. So if anyone's going through that, I, I strongly agree that you speak to someone or, you know, you go um, to, you know, any um, support networks and that because they will help you. Um, I've seen counsellors and stuff like that. For me, it wasn't beneficial. I didn't get what I was after. But it was until, you know, I opened my spiritual journey that everything started to awake. And literally, it's like, you know how they say, um, you know how they say you've got like, you know, people who, you know, energy vampires, you know, they'll yep. ride your tail and everything like that. But once you start to find your light, they all basically, you know, they all drop, well, not drop dead, but they all just drop and fall away, basically. And mm -hmm. that's what happened with my depression. It all just went away. So... You know, because we're finding that positive aspect. But, you know, to answer your question, basically, you know, yes, 100%. It's, I've seen a lot of changes within everything. Mm. Jackie in the chat room says, did you let the other kids at about what age? Hold on. Did he let others know about his gifts at a young age? Did the other kids know that you could hear or see things that they couldn't? Good question. Well, Great question, Jackie. At that time, I didn't actually know that I was a psychic or a medium. And the reason for that, it wasn't until the last, oh, I'll say about five, six years that I really started to awaken it. I always had that connection. I always knew I was very different from all other kids. And I was that type of person to go up to someone and be like, you know, hey, are you okay? What's this trouble? Are you fine? Everything like that. And if people didn't want to talk about it, I always knew there was a problem or I always knew there was something about that. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't at that stage of actually discovering exactly what was going on. At a young age, I grew up at Catholic schools and Christian schools. You know, I followed my grandmother who was a uh, Sunday school teacher and stuff like that. So I always had that religious faith or that connection that you want to call it. Um, but, you know, at a young age... For me now, I see it, I was psychic then because I used to see things, you know, when I was younger um, in my bedroom and stuff like that, but I didn't have that ability or that actual chance to read people like I do now. Maybe if I had a lot of, you know, um, if I got rid of all the clutter and all that background um, crap, rubbish that essentially happened, then yes, I could have, but I didn't quite find it until basically 14, 15 of when it all started to evolve for me. So great question, Jackie. Um, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. For a little, little bit later, not right away, uh, but Alex is willing to do a uh, reading. So do connections with you guys. So if you want, um, what, when, when you do readings, um, going to say on air do you like a question or do you like to just do general or 
just sort of like, because I can never come up with a question because every time I come up with a question, I always come up with my answer, which is not really good. Um, but usually I'll just say like, I'll take a general, whatever spirit has for me, I share, uh, yeah. share it with me. Okay. So well, a general question, unless somebody has a specific area that they would like you to try and connect with. Yeah, well, 100%. You know, the thing is, general readings are general readings. You know, if they say, hey, I want a general reading, I can talk about anything and everything, basically. Um, and, you know, I enjoy that. You know, it's a, it's something that, you know, I can do. But if someone's really got a specific question that they need, you know, assistance or answers with, let's say, like a relationship or whatever, um, then, you know, yes, I can help you with that. So um, anything specific, anything general, I'm happy to assist. But obviously, because we are on air and everything like that, I like to try and keep everyone's privacy and their confidentiality, you know, obviously, you know, remains and kept. So if there's things that, you know, I do, sense or feel you know i will tell you but at the end of the day you know i need to respect everyone's privacy and confidentiality so yeah if that makes sense yeah that's one thing um is a lot of people don't get it is is there a fade especially on live shows (laughs) on live shows i've noticed that most people usually ask am i going to get the job um is is so-and-so going to come back to me or am i going to find the the man, woman, person of my dreams, will I move? So, yeah. you know, I have, I have, you know, I have issues with, with will so-and-so love me or will I find love? Yeah. For me, for me, my issue with that is, and I know it sounds silly because some people go, yeah, um, but, um, hold on a second. Um, I find that it, it's how a lot of people say that they love themselves, but they don't love them. To me, they don't love themselves enough that they're sitting there worrying about what Jack, Jill, or, you know, whoever is going to come back into their lives and love them. For me, that's that's my hardest question to deal yeah. with is romance. Yeah. Do you and have yeah. a question that you like the least? My thing is, just quickly, on that relationship, right, you know, everyone, every, we all want to know about relationships because relationships is our pinnacle aspect, you know. Mm-hmm. We all want to have that connection. We all want to have, you know, that feeling of, you know, that physical, that emotional connection, everything like that. Um, but, you know, for me, if let's say, for example, Darlene's like, you know, oh, my God, is Peter going to come back into my life or something like that, you know. <laughs> yes, there is that potential chance, but mm-hmm. we also need to realise that spirit and our human existence, well, our, everyone who's living in this physical world, all have free will. So essentially, you know, yes, they can come back, but it's up to the individual self if they want to. And that's important. So I thought I'd just put that out there. Um, but in regards for me, my favorite questions, oh, it's hard really. You know, for me, when I get a reading done, it's completely opposite. It's like, you know, I'll sit in the chat. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm nervous. I'm shaking. What are they going to say? What are they going to tell me? Um, so, you know, my questions I'd ask Korea. Korea is obviously number one. Relationships, mm-hmm. and I'm like to myself, yeah, relationships don't happen when they happen. Um, but it's more about career and, you know, um, everything like that. But with regards to my favorite questions, I love anything to do with, you know, um, guidance or direction, career, relationships, um, basically anything and everything. I can help everyone pretty much all aspects. So, you know, I'm happy to help with whatever, basically. <laughs> Are there, okay, uh, I'm going to go back to your, your, your website because there was a question that sort of have you okay it's not in your in your bio have you ever done um paranormal investigations or worked with an investigation team as as a medium or you know something along those lines yeah great question so i have actually done that so um there's a few people that i have worked alongside with um you know her name's Jules. So Jules is um, a lady here in Melbourne and she does um, what we call paranormal investigations and stuff like that. So she works alongside with another company that they run um, and, you know, her friend was ill at the time so she invited me to come and do a sleepover. 
So we were staying at a place called J Ward Mental Asylum. And, you know, for me, uh, everyone's going to laugh at this. I can't do horror movies. Like, mm-hmm. you put on Annabelle or, you know, The Conjuring and all that. I can't sit for it. I've got the blanket. I'm hiding. I've got pillows. I've got everything like that. It's weird. And I'm a medium. I still don't get it myself. But when it comes to, you know, paranormal events, like, you know, let's go jump at, let's go stay at a haunted house. I'll go do it with no tomorrow, you know. I'll mm-hmm. go jump in there. I'll do everything like that. And the thing for me, it's because what we see in Hollywood and what we see in the physical um, aspects is two completely different things. Yeah. And so, you know, I've been to J. Ward Mental Asylum. Just a quick little history. It was basically an asylum built, um, you know, it housed the criminally insane. Before that, you know, it was used as a prison, but it eventually housed the criminally insane. So you had the first HIV patients. You had um, people who, you, you know, would, um, I won't get graphic, but they'd decapitate certain parts of themselves. Um, you know, basically they had a lot of mental illnesses and everything like that. Okay. So when I went in there for the first time, it's like the energies and everything like that, you could feel it straight away. It wasn't pleasant. It wasn't exciting. It just felt really murky and, yeah, don't go there. And so I slept there. Um, to be honest with you, did I sleep? I probably had like 10 minutes sleep out of the whole time um, because, you know, there were so many things going on at night that you can't quite fully describe. And if anyone doesn't know, you know, with paranormal, you know, tours and stuff like that, you have what we call like different equipment. So you have a K2 meter, which picks up the electromagnetic field energy. You've got a spirit box, which basically produces white, white noise, uh, white sound, sorry. So it's a different frequency and spirit can communicate and everything like that. And, you know, with me, obviously the medium, I can see things, I can feel things, everything like that. So mm-hmm. I went into this situation, they had a church there. And they had this little chapel. I sat in there, and this is the one thing that was really horrifying for me. We had everything in one particular moment. We put all the equipment down. Then all of a sudden, everything came up with the word, get out, devil. And I'm like to myself, okay, let's all get out. We're not going to play around with that (laughs) stuff. So, you know, it was something where, you know, it was crazy. So, you know, I heard screams, we heard a lot of things, and, you know, so I love that type of stuff. you obviously got to protect yourself well enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I've, I've done um, Pentridge Prison, which is a prison here in Melbourne. Um, I've done a few different things, but my all-time favourite dream would be Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum in um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. So, I have a that well. <laughs> Yes, so, you know, definitely. So, you know, I do the paranormal stuff. You know, I love it, but do mm-hmm. I do much of that? Not really, because it's hard, obviously, with, you know, a busy schedule that I do have. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's basically like, you know, having fun, but it's more like you need to respect, you know, um, you know, you've got to respect, you know, the spirits there because it's residual energy. You know, they are people who live there. They are people who either died there and all that. So you need to have that level of respect when dealing with anyone like that. It's like, obviously, how would you treat your grandmother or your best friend, basically? Very true. A lot of people go into these, into investigations and, and they antagonize. And, right. you know, and, and, and I know it's, it's a story that goes around the paranormal community. A lot of my friends have spoken about this. There was, uh, I don't remember the guy's name, so it's not like I'm not, I'm not going to say his name to save his, his yeah. bacon, but I really can't remember. He went in going, okay, come on, scratch me, hit me, do whatever you want to me. And when he finally did get scratched, he ran screaming from the room. So you have to be careful what you ask for. You know, and it, it's in the paranormal field and as in, in the spiritual field in general, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, will ask for things and when they, cause they imagine it's going to be so, it's going to be like, touch me. It's a hand on my shoulder. And instead they just, you know, give you a shove. There's a difference, you know, it's like for me, the way I get, um, the way I get, uh, my connection with spirit mm-hmm. is I get shivers and I know how my shivers work. I have yeah. no idea how it does. It just, I know which side is which and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. I've always said it would be fun to actually see spirit. But then I have, I have a friend who sees spirit and he says, sometimes you want to, you don't want to, you can't unsee what you've seen because huh. his, hi, Mary, uh, because his, his spirit guide is, is, is a man with, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
and and he's been known to wear tutus when they do the you know the church events yeah and the podiums and he'll he's he's a very interesting character when he was alive and he's the same kind of way so i mean you always have to be careful what you ask for so mm, yeah I don't know. Mm. I always think that I would be the one to be screaming when, when go to a paranormal investigation because I really can't stand scary movies. I think they are, ugh, you know. Well, that's the thing, you know, that's the thing with everything, you know, you do, obviously, you know, it's more that I'm a firm believer that, you know, you need to respect them because yeah. we've got, you know, we've got different, you know, types of spirits. So we've got things called poltergeist um, spirits or poltergeist activity, which is basically aka noisy spirits. So they're mm -hmm. people, they're spirits that will obviously move things, throw things and stuff like that, um, or even touch you. Yeah. And it's important that you set your ground rules because spirits are like a toddler. They're like a two-year-old, you know. You can mm -hmm. tell them don't and they'll do it. You can tell them, you know, all right, stay there. They won't stay there. They'll follow you, you know. Um, and, you know, yeah, I'm not saying it in a negative way. Like, it's not like you're going to get possessed and stuff like that. But it's more that, you know, you will have that connection. And it's more about setting your boundaries and everything like that. When I first went into, you know, a um, paranormal um, a paranormal, you know, experience myself, I said to them, I always set my intentions. Look, I'm here. I don't mean harm. I want to mm -hmm. communicate with you. I want to help you. I want to share your message around so we know exactly who you are. I do not appreciate getting touched, getting this, getting that. And, you know, if I ask them to please touch me, that's me agreeing with, okay, I'm agreeing with whatever will happen. Does that make sense? So, yes, yes. you know, if things like that happen, I'll be like, nope, see you later. I don't want to ha that happen. Um, but, you know, talking about how you feel things and sense things just then, you know, I'll get like, I'll get like shivers or I'll get that tingling or I'll just feel like as you walk into the room, like everything feels like the energy and everything around that feels like it's just dropped. And when I feel that, to me, it's normally an indication that a spirit is around. Um, if I feel like a lot of heaviness or a lot of, you know, denseness, to me, I feel like, you know, someone's either, you know, um, they've either had suicide or they, or whatever it may have been, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have your different feelings and sensations. And for someone who's never had it, it can be quite scary. It can be quite detrimental. But... I've had a lot of people on tours and people go to me, oh, I went to a tour, but I didn't feel anything. And my thing is, again, it's all about free will. Spirit will choose if they want to communicate with you. They will choose if they want to talk to you. And it's like even with my readings, I say to everyone, I can't guarantee that, you know, for example, you know, your grandfather Henry will come through. It just depends on if he wants to share a message or not. Because mm. he might be going, he might be going, you know, in the spirit world, he might be playing golf or whatever he normally does. But it's something where, you know, you need to understand that there is that connection of they will come through when they need to. So you can call upon him, you can talk to him, you can do everything like that. But it's just a knowing that if you have a very strong faith and if you believe, then truly you'll be amazed at what can basically happen. So, um, you know, that's basically that. Mm. Well, Kathy in the chat room has a question. How do you, how do readings come to you? Uh, I'm gathering, I, I would assume that she means like when you sit down to do a reading with somebody, whether it's yep. face to face or whatever, do you hear, see, feel spirit? Which one comes first? And, and, you know. Okay. Great question, Kathy. So basically, when I do my readings, um, how do I sense them? How do I feel them? Everything like that. Basically, what happens is before I start a reading or before I start anything, I set my intentions. So I'll call upon my guides, angels, loved ones. I'll call upon, you know, spirit loved ones. I'll call upon my uh, spirit guides because we've got spirit guides. And, um, you know, my grandmother in the spirit world, she works closely with me. So she will pass. She's sort of like, I call her the, um, the collective gatherer. And what I mean by that is that for me, she's a guy that will bring through spirit. She was a guy that will, you know, um, bring them all through, get them ready. It's like an appointment setting with my grandmother, you know. She's that type of lady who will, you know, work. Yeah, she'll be like, okay, Alex, you've got this one, this one, that one. So for me, when I do readings, it's me. I'm a channeler, but I'm also working alongside with different types of, you know, spirits or, you know, guides or whoever you want to talk with. So it's like a corporate event, basically. Um, but how I work really is when I've got a client coming through, you know, I ask them, okay, look, do any questions, how can I help? So I will start off with, you know, their name, date of birth, you know, everything like that. 
but it's basically channeling. So I'm sensing their energy. I'm reading and interpreting their energy. So if I've got someone who's sitting across from me, it's like, okay, mm, you know, I feel quite light. It feels, you know, quite bubbly energy. It feels like someone, you know, she's quite um, open or she's quite spoken, basically everything like that. But if I have someone who sits there and I can just feel like their energy is like, Meh. like I said, like, okay, what, the, what, you know, what's up with this? I can start to sense, you know, all right, there's many different problems and stuff like that. So it's all energy related. It's all understanding, you know, people's gestures and stuff like that. So as a psychic and a psychic medium, we read into everything. We read into their face appearances. We read into their energies. We read into what's going on. But it's all about understanding that. So when it comes into readings and stuff like that, you know, it's all, to me, it's all about energy, it's all about channeling, and it's all about understanding, you know, your clients, so when they're first sitting down, you can look at your tarot cards and stuff like that, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's something that you need to understand, you know, how do you work, because everyone works completely different in a reading, so mm -hmm. it's like, for example, Darlene, I'll come see you for a reading, and you might do something completely different, and I'll do something completely different, but mm -hmm. to me, it's a matter, if we can get the message out there, and if we can help them with what's going through, then to me, I'm doing my job and I'm helping them with whatever. And let's face it, not everyone will love the message you give them. Not everybody will, you know, completely agree with, agree with you. I've had readings that, you know, it's like it could be completely, you know, a myth, like, yeah, I don't understand. But then they'll also go home and realise, okay, hang on, everything he said was correct or everything he said, you know, yes, I can't agree with, but I understand that. Or else there's other times where it's like, well, I've really blitzed that. So to me, it just depends on, you know, it's like a fun connection. If you've got a very great line in that connection, you have a great reading. If you've got a few bumpiness, there may not be a great reading, but to me, the client must be open because we're open channels, but if the client's not open, they're not going to get their full message. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's very true. Because like you say, if if I sit down and I say, okay, um, Alex, I want to talk to my great-grandmother. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah. Alex in the chat room. Hey, Eric. Yes, I was talking about Teddy before. Um, but my great-grandmother's like, Psh, I don't talk to her. She's, you know, she didn't fix her hair the right way. So it sends yeah. your mother along, you know. So that's one thing a lot of people um, uh, forget, you know. I, I saw something the other day on Facebook um that that uh mediumship is is not a science because it is just oh god i wish i could have remembered what it said because because it's spontaneous correct you know, yes we can sit down i can sit and make an appointment with you and go okay alex i want a reading but what i have in my head what i want doesn't always happen because spirit mm -hmm. spirit has a mind of their own so they get to choose what they want yeah um, you know, I Oh, sorry to interrupt there, but I call them pesky spirits because at <laughs> times it's like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have friends come over and I'm like to myself, you know, they know what I do or anything like that. But if they bring someone else over, so for example, let's say, you know, uh, a friend brought his girlfriend over or something like that. Now, the girlfriend it doesn't really know what I do. And next minute I'm like, oh, sorry, you know, I'm a psychic medium. Have you lost your grandmother? Because your grandmother wants to say to me that she really loves you and she adores you for everything you've done. She also talks about a reference between, you know, this, 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 that. The person's going to look at me like, are you serious? But no, spirit, they want to come through they want to pass their message <laughs> it's true it's so true. It, it can be those times where you know as you said spontaneous it's like okay that was spontaneous where did that come from yeah do you sometimes find that you have um like you know that you're going to have this this show for example you're, yeah. you you knew ahead of time you're going to have the show and we said, yeah, and I said, yes, if you want to do readings, it's fine. I'm not difficult. This is this is not a show where you come out and you have to do readings. Mm -hmm. If you decide, if spirit decides, I'm not even going to talk to you tonight, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's however you choose it. But have you ever found that knowing you're going to, okay, you got up this morning and you have somebody who's like following you around and, and you have a spirit that wants to connect with you, but it's like you, you have no idea who it's for. And all of a sudden you get into the show and it's like, ah, okay, the, the, the spirit comes forward again and, and it's like, okay, this is where I need to be. This is where I need you to, like, they're, they're, they're there before their appointed time. I know. Yeah. yeah. Look, I really understand that 110%. You know, mm -hmm. the thing for me, it's like, you know, I don't have it normally happen all the time, but 
it's the very rare occurrences that, you know, it may happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I used to go, I remember when I first started reading and stuff like that, even today, I used to annoy the crap out of mum and I'd be like, mum, we've got a little boy that's following me around. And I was like, well, you know, go get him some Lego, go get him a teddy bear and he'll play with the Lego and teddy bear. And I'm like, mum, you realise he's passed away? And she's like, yeah, but still. So I'd go get a teddy bear and a Lego, you know, make him sort of at home. Um, you know, they're still, they're still a child, essentially. And so I had this one particular child, he was probably about the age of five, that he would just hang around, hang around, hang around. And every reading, I drive me nuts. I'm like, hey, sorry, can I just ask a question? Have you lost a little boy? He's in, he's in a blue top with blue striped pants. He's got brown hair. Um, and his name says that, you know, he's, I don't know, I think, I forget his name, but let's say it's Tom, for example. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, okay. So this little boy was hanging around for, a, you know, a few weeks until I sat down and this lady um, messaged me. She goes, look, I want to book a reading. It's desperate because I've just lost someone. And I'm like to myself, okay. And as soon as I'm saying that, I'm still getting goosebumps to this day. Um, and she came for a reading and I said, how can I help you? And I said to her, I go, look. And she goes, look, I've lost someone. You know, I need a reading. I want to see, you know, if I've done the right things or anything like that. And so I said to her straight away, the little boy came out. It's like literally, to me, it just, I just literally seen the client sit directly in front of me and the little boy just ran through the door. I'm like, okay, mate, you got to open the door. Don't just run through it. But now he decided to run through it. And I just heard that I could see him. I'm like, I go, honey, have you lost a little boy? His name's Tom. He's wearing blue pants, I mean, blue striped pants with a blue top. She started bawling her eyes out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I finally found who this is connected with. <laughs> yes. Then, you know, then I obviously got into details and everything like that. I won't go, uh, you know, the the little boy, you know, to me, um, you know, it was never meant to happen. It was a holiday that went wrong. You know, it went wrong because, you know, he went swimming and obviously, you know, he never came back. So it was something that was hard for the mother because she never got the closure. You know, she blamed herself for it. When when things like that, it's, you know, natural disasters that you can't quite deal with. And, you know, we can go and save and we can do everything. But at the end of the day, you know, it's hard because, you know, it's something that you can't have full control with. So she got her closure from that. But then Tom was also showing me that there was a pregnancy. So I said to her, I go, are you pregnant? And she said to me, how'd you know that? I said, well, Tom told me. And she said to me, I'm not pregnant. I go, but I want to tell you now, Tom will reincarnate because I'm a firm believer in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, within the next six weeks, she messaged me and said, Alex, I'm pregnant. It's a boy. So at that time, I'm like to myself, okay, there's your confirmation, you know, these things, I can't make up what I'm saying, I can feel them, and, you know, people can say to me, Alex, you know, that's bizarre, how did you get that, I can't make it up, you know, to me, it's like an imagination, but it's these things that are actually real, and it's occurring, so, you know, sometimes you can't put together where it's coming from, how it is, so, you know, exactly, there's no science behind what we feel and what we see, so, Tom hangs around, he hangs around for a little bit, but, you know, obviously he went back home, and it's important because why this happens is that sometimes spirit themselves, they haven't actually, you know, they haven't crossed over properly because they've got a message that they still want to pass on because they, they're they always holding on to that moment or they didn't get a chance to say goodbye properly. So I'm a firm believer that once spirit has their chance to speak, they will move on. They will go to what we call the light or whatever you believe in. But in saying that, you know, they will always be around us. It doesn't mean that they're physically, physically gone from us. It means that their connections and, you know, their their actual spirit form, yes, it's gone to heaven or whatever you believe in, but, you know, you'll always have that energy. you always have them around you no matter what. Mm-hmm. So for the mother at that time, it was a firm belief. You know, yes, there was a lot of tears and a lot of laughter or anything like that. So I've had a few spirits walk around. Um, you know, I had one. I had one particular moment where a spirit scared the you know, um, obviously living day out of me. So, you know, I was getting ready for a market one day, and you know, five thirty in the morning, half asleep. You know, when you just wake up, it's like I haven't had my coffee, I haven't had this, I haven't had that, and you know, I'm getting up. I went to turn the heater on, and there's this spirit who just literally jumped out of me, and I'm panicking, going, oh, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, because you know, it's like really 
that scared me. So I ran to mum, and mum goes, Alex, are you serious? What do you do for work? I go, yeah, I know, but it scared me. <laughs> so, you know, you have those fun times and everything like that. You know, it's spontaneous. You never know what's going to happen. Very, very true. Very, very true. Um, you are, I'm, I'm good. I am one thing you'll find out about me is that I kind of sort of bounce around things that you'll say something and it'll cl- click something and it yeah. takes me a little while to get to it. So you are a Reiki master. Correct. When 19 year old, old man, at what <laughs> age did you become a Reiki master? So this all happened to me. Um, it would have happened the last year or so ago. So I obviously wanted to learn healings and stuff like that. Mind you, for my psychic development and mediumship, I never had any classes. It all just came naturally. I learned how to read um, tarot cards myself. I learned how to do readings myself. The only thing that I um, learned was basically um, neurology, and that was from a lady who I appreciate and applaud so much, Rita. Um, She's quite known here as well. But I learned Reiki because it was something I've always wanted to do. Okay. And at the age, from the age 14, I'm like, you know, I want to learn Reiki. I want to learn this. I want to learn that. And uh, I've had so many people say to me, oh, come learn with me. Come learn with me. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Until the point where I said yes to learn Reiki the last year or so ago. And, you know, I to me, it just felt it was amazing. I could feel the energy. I could feel everything like that. And for me, it was quite different because I'm used to reading people. Now mm-hmm. it's like I'm used to, now I've got to play with energy. I've got to balance chakras. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. But then I'd also find that I'm reading people on a different level. So I'm learning about their physical bodies. I'm learning about this. So it was quite interesting. And then in Reiki 2, so you have three levels. So you have Reiki mm-hmm. 1, Reiki 2, and your Masters. Reiki 1's obviously, you know, understanding, you know, everything about, you know, Reiki, the history, the lineage, everything like that. But Reiki 2 is where you learn more about distant healing or absent healing, stuff like that. And that's what really got me because, you know, yes, you can do your absent healing you know with you know your symbols and stuff like that but I'd also do the healing and I could feel like okay I feel like there's some sort of you know um I feel like there's pain in the right leg pain in the right arm I feel like there's arthritis but then you'd also combine the healing and the psychic mediumship together so I found that works well for me um but the Reiki mastership is something between um is something that is incredible. So mastership was the tip of the iceberg for me. It was like, okay, I just felt completed. I felt, you know, it was something for, um, you know, this connection because, you know, I went through my difference. I went through, you know, um, you know, went through your own little purges and healings and everything like that for the journey. But it was a, it was so rewarding in many different ways. So now I obviously teach classes or anything like mm-hmm. that, and I've never looked back on it since. I don't think I've ever heard of anybody uh, ever wanting to. Though it was a silly question that was posted. This is why it was posted in a, um, a conversation that I was having. Mm-hmm. Um, like when you get attuned, what happens if you want to be unattuned? I've never heard of anybody wanting to be unattuned. And if you don't like what you're doing, if you don't like what you're getting, then you just stop doing it. You know, it's there yeah. when you need it. You know, it's like uh, <laughs> Eric in the chat room says, Reiki is too much hard work for this old medium. But for <laughs> me, yeah, for me, uh, when I when when I learned Reiki, I knew that I did healing before. I just didn't have a name for it. Mm-hmm. Um. Um. Uh, but I knew that I did healing before. And when my Reiki master approached me and it just, it just sort of fell into place. Yeah. You know, and, and I, and again, I say it's, it's my foundation. It's like mm-hmm. for me, Catholicism, I was raised as a little Catholic girl. I went, I was an altar girl and it was, it was, a, it was a foundation. I could build yeah. on it and go whichever way I wanted. Healing for me, Reiki is a foundation for me to build on. Because there's so many different techniques of healing that that Reiki is one form, you know? yeah. and and there's different you know nowadays there's different forms of Reiki. Yes, yeah. and that's the thing you know Reiki is the foundation. It teaches you the history. It teaches you the lineage. It teaches you, you know how to perform 
have a healing and also how to feel energy because going on the attunements basically you know attunements is like turning the light switch on it's turning the light switch on for you to adapt into those different types of frequencies and you know connecting it all basically in and for me you know it was you know you can go through how i said your emotions your purges or anything like that but to me i find that reiki was the foundation for me to learn you know what is healing how to heal people, mm -hmm. you know, what is it that needs to encompass? Because, you know, being a psychic medium, you know, I'm out there with, you know, the whole, you know, oh, I've got your grandmother, blah, blah, blah. But healing, it's like, okay, what is healing? Healing is completely different from a whole psychic medium point. And then you look at healing, they're basically two different types of worlds. And, you know, for me, it's like, okay, you know, I'm good with one world. The healing one, the healing is going to be a journey that's going to be endless, basically, because mm. we're healing on many different levels. We're yeah. healing ourself, we're healing our spirit, we're healing our mind, our soul, everything like that, but also healing people. So, again, we're dealing with people's emotions and everything like that. It's all connected, but there's just endless potential opportunities that you can go with healing. And for me, I say to anyone, if you want to learn, if you want to learn healing, you want to learn readings, everything like that, I strongly recommend that you learn Reiki. You might think, oh, you know, Reiki's boring and rah, 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 whatever. But that's the foundation for you to build yourself upwards and everything like that. Exactly, exactly. I I I am a Reiki master as well, grandmaster. And yep. um uh, a friend in the chat room says Reiki with Darlene is wonderful. Thank you. Um oh, there you go. <laughs> I also know that it's when when um it it's not just the one thing I use. You know, mm -hmm. there's more, but it, it was a foundation. It taught me how to heal properly because a lot exactly. of people, I had a friend who, um, who used to take the person's pain into themselves. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I learned from when I learned with, with my masters and with all the, the research that I did that you're just like, like a medium. You're just a conduit. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the telephone. We know, you know, the universe gives us the energies to heal and it just, comes in through us and goes out through us and it, it there's no sucking up of the you know if you're going to take it out then you're going to throw it away you know because exactly. uh, it's, you know it it's hard for people to understand it's like how does that work I, it it just does you know yeah. it's, you know it's hard to explain it to somebody in detail like you said it's not a scientific thing whether it's mediumship whether it's psychic whether it's healing it, it it's there's no scientific it's you can't hold it in your hands and prove it and say, Here, look, I'm doing this like you can actually see me. <laughs> I'm exactly. saying you can't really just sit there and go, Here, look. You have to believe, you have to be open to to the to the possibilities of healing, of getting your message, of you know, for me healing is is uh <laughs> is is it, uh, as a psychic, as a medium, as a healer, you're we're all doing healing of different levels. It's just like you said, mind, body, and soul. So yeah. you know, it's, when people try and stick me in a little box and say, "Are you a?" No, I'm a healer, and yeah. a healer includes my giving messages, my doing Reiki, my you know. So, it, but yeah, and healing is. Uh, go ahead. Exactly. And sorry to cut you off there, but, you know, it's important to realize, you know, as Reiki and stuff like that, we cannot heal. We cannot heal them. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is what I've been told, you know, this is what I've been taught. You know, we can say that we're a healer. We can say we're all this, but it's up to the individual self if mm -hmm. they're ready to heal that particular part. Because we can shift the energies. We can pass energy. We can pass the light onto specific parts of what they want to be healed with and all that. But if they're not ready to physically heal their self, then we can't we can't obviously heal them. It's up to, like you said, the individual self to believe, believe in that they're having a healing done or to believe in that they need this help and assistance. We can only give them the help. We can give them assistance. We can balance their chakras, everything like that. But it's up to their own self if they're willing and wanting to make it happen for their own self. It's like a reading, for example. You know, I can give you a reading. I can say, look, you know, look, I feel like that if you, you know, I feel like the job change will be necessary. I feel like if you want to quit your job, I feel like, you know, you'll be in a positive area. It'll be more abundant and everything like that. But it's up to the individual change. If they're scared to change, they're not going to get that opportunity. 
But if they're scared to, you know, take that leap of faith or whatever, how do you know what's going to happen? You know, I could give you the best guidance or whatever, you know, but it's up to yourself to take on that healing, that message, whatever it may be, mm-hmm. to, to use it to your advantage. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Very much so. And Again, it, what, it's that, it's that, um, I can't, I lost the word there. Um, okay, keep going because I, I forgot my word. Yeah, <laughs> because what people don't realize, right, I, I, I love using the term now. If everyone's seen the Lion King, it's like the circle of life, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, that's what we are. We're the circle of life. You know, everything about us, we're all connected. You know, we're all connected. We're on past, you know, strands, DNAs, everything like that. Um, this is me going all old school, you know, old, old wise wisdom guru here. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, uh-huh. like, <laughs> it's like, you know, when you think about it, you know, we're all connected. We're all on this physical world having a human experience. We're all here to learn how to read, write, draw, everything like that. Or for many of us, you know, this could be your fourth time on this world because why? You haven't learned your lesson on the first time. So you're going to go repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it until you actually Mm -hmm. learn the lesson. And for many people, it's more like, you know, they say to me, now, relationships are hard. I get that. But if you're in this negative relationship that you need to escape from, you know, then maybe it's for your best advantage to do so. But if you're going to stay in that negative, but you're going to keep learning that lesson over and over and over and over until you do. And it's important to realize that it's like, for example, the triangle, you know, the father, son, Holy Spirit, whatever you believe in. You know, mm-hmm. It's basically everything's connected all into one. Reiki is connected into mediumship, right? Mediumship is connected to the psychic. You know, the whole evolution, the whole consciousness, it's bigger than what people actually realize. Mm-hmm. And for me, and like you, darling, I'm not too sure if you will agree with me, but we can't make people believe. We can no. only give them what they need to know, and it's up to them. If they're skeptic, they're skeptic. I love skeptics, right? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it tests me, but... You know, I'm doing what I'm doing. If you don't believe in it, that's your judgment. That's your calling. But my thing is, you know, have your experiences. Learn everything you can. Even if you're out there thinking to yourself, hey, you know what? I want to learn tarot cards. I want to learn healing. I want to learn that. You know, go ahead. Do a class. You know, you might not be the next, you know, um, big celebrity, famous medium or anything like that. But you can only try. You can only see and explore things. Because if that doesn't work for you, do it in ways that works for you, basically, because we're all learning. We're all on this human earth to have this physical experience, but we already know our soul's desire, our soul's plan, our life purpose. But sometimes you need to understand it and put it into perspective. Very true. Eric in the chat room has written, any form of spiritual healing is like water flowing through a drain pipe. It doesn't leak out if it leaks or if you add some more of your energy to it then you're not doing it right. As spirit really spirit really doesn't need help. They're quite capable of doing it themselves. They are the masters. Very true. Um, no, spirit, no, no, no. Yeah, spirit and the universe, whatever people want to call it, they are the ones that that give it give us the ability that mm-hmm. make us the conduit, make us the drain pipe. That you know, and if, if spirit doesn't want to work with us, then you know this is the point is that you have to be open and willing to learn. You have to be open and willing to, to, for me, my way of thinking is to share your knowledge. That's one of the reasons why I do this show is because everybody that comes on has, has knowledge that, that I believe needs to be shared. And trust me, if you don't want to share it, you're not going to be a guest on my show because this is all about sharing. But, um, it, it's, and I think that you're sharing, like I said, you're, you're 19 years old. You're, oh God, I'm still going to say it again. You're a baby, <laughs> you know, but you're a physical yeah. baby because what you, the, the way you speak, the, the, with the knowledge you have, it, you're not a nine, an, an average 19 year old. Trust sure. me. I work in a convenience store. I see average 19 year olds. And I just, the first thing I want to tell them all is to pull up their pants, <laughs> you know, but me, me, so, me. 
yeah, sorry to cut you up there, cut you off there, but me being there as an average nineteen year old, do you know how hard it is to find friends or, you know, like minded people at nineteen? Mm-hmm. You know, all my friends are either in their thirties, their forties, their twenty six year olds or whatever. They've got their own family. But for me to find a relationship, it's extremely hard as well. Because why? We don't have that connection, we don't have that like mindedness. Because you go tell an average nineteen year old, it's like, Oh, let's go have drinks and all that where it's like, Oh, I speak to dead people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, there's that part. But at the end of the day, if you believe in what you do, you'll find what you need. But hundred percent, darling, I get you. You know, average nineteen year olds, no judgment, no disrespect to them. But a lot of people are on their own different journeys. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, you will meet many people in your life who will have an effect on you, whether they stay for a long time or whether they go quickly. It, and I don't mean pass. I mean, like, you know, just like, oh, you, you met the guy on the street corner and you you stopped and, and he taught you something without you realizing it and you never saw him again because he went on about his life. We yeah. all have people who, who come into our lives. We all have situations who come into our lives for that specific reason. And like you said, if you didn't learn the lesson the first time or whatever it is um, that 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 you have to learn, then you're going to keep repeating that same issue. Uh, exactly. Jackie, Jackie in the chat room says, that is hard because then you are young and you feel isolated. Do you ever feel isolated that, that you don't have people of your own age to... To hang out with? Look, you know, I've got some best... I've, I've finally... Okay, let's put it this way, right? I was scared to put myself out there because, you know, I'm a medium, I'm this, I'm all that. Who's going to understand me, right? Mm-hmm. Because when I first started this industry, I got a lot of judgment. I yeah. got a lot of hate from many people. So, basically, I won't go into specifics and all that because I won't name shame people and everything like that. You know, it's a learning lesson. We've got to learn things. I had to learn, you know, all, you know. But when I first started, you know, I had, you know, people who used to follow me from school, you know, teachers and stuff like that. You know, I remember one person said to me particularly, and, you know, I'm not going to name shame, but this is something that always left me to heart. And, you know, it just goes to show that, you know, sometimes people can judge you. And, you know, sometimes when you prove to people what's going on, uh, you know, it's like, you, they start to realize. So I remember I went, I quit school and, you know, I said to them, you know, I'm quitting school, you know, I don't like school, you guys aren't helping, da da da. And my coordinator at the time said to me, Alex, you will never get far in life. You're going to be living on the streets, you're going to be involved in drugs, anything like that, and you're not going to get nowhere in life. And I sat with that and I said, okay, you know what? Cool. Thank you for that one. So now to the point where, you know, I became a qualified chef. I basically, you know, became, you know, the psychic medium and I became the person who is now, you know, obviously getting out and about. I'm traveling to all over Australia. So I'm going to Brisbane. I've been to Sydney, you know, everything like that. And to the point where it's like, you know what? I did isolate myself. I held myself back. But now it's like, you know, I am who I am. I can't change myself for no one. If people don't like me, that's their problem. If people don't understand me, okay, cool. But I'm not going to hold myself back because I isolated myself for many years. I isolated myself from putting myself out there. I'm still scared to put myself out there at times because Mm -hmm. we're always going to have that human experience of that self-doubt and everything like that. Even you, Darlene, I'm sure everyone else can understand where it's a bit like, you know, do I take that opportunity? Do I not take that opportunity? What the hell? Um, so, you know, yes, you can isolate yourself around that. But once you find your good friendship circles, then it's important. You know, I've got, a, I've got best friends now, you know. Um, I've got, you know, one who's um, not only turning 21 and all of that. And so, you know, close in age. But you learn so many things throughout your journeys. You learn the truth of people. You learn everything like that. We learn lessons that we don't like. But unfortunately, we have to learn from these lessons to grow and to understand the truth in every situation. That's very true. Mm. So, you know, it's something where you learn, you do that. But, you know, I isolated myself, but now I'm getting myself out there slowly. So, um, you know, I'll go to, I like, I'm not much of a party person or anything like that. You know, I'll meet people out and about. But, you know, it just depends on, you know, what it is, but young and free isolated, I was definitely young and free and isolated. Now I'm slowly getting myself out there, and, you know, since I hate to be all eager and bragging, but since I'm getting a name out there, I've had teachers come back, I've had people come back, and they're like, you know what, Alex, 
I I honestly felt that, you know, you weren't going to get far and they'll look at you. And it's something where it's like, wow. I ran into one of my primary school teachers the other day, you know, at a local shopping centre. And, you know, she, the school I went to was amazing. And I told her what I'd done and she was stunned. And she goes, Alex, I cannot believe how far you've came and how proud I am of you. I've always wondered how you've been. And, you know, now she, she wants to book him for a reading, everything like that. So it, it just goes to show there's genuine people out there and there's not so genuine. But we're all learning how to live. Exactly. And and let me tell you, at 57, I still have uh, my issues and my doubts whether, you know, I'm doing the right thing. Where am I, you know, where am I taking mm. this? And, and you know, I, I have, um, it, I was at a radio show the other day and it was, it was a tribute show to a very, very dear friend uh, who passed away from massive coronary yep. so unexpectedly. And he was a great guy and there was people coming in talking about him, but there was one person who came in to talk about, uh, their connection to him. And, and I have it, I have a, a, a gut feeling about this person and yeah. I can't, I can't escape it. So every time mm -hmm. I heard this person talk, I, in my mind, everything goes back to that person. And even they're talking about, you know, the, 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 the gentleman who passed, but when you speak to this other person, oh, yeah, well, I remember I doing this. And because, you know, it always comes back to them. And for me, there's always an ulterior motive. We have to understand that you have, we have to believe in our guts. We have to trust in our guts mm. that you got that e feeling about somebody, no matter how much somebody builds them up. You know, if yes. you have that, it might be great for the next person, but, you know, for you yeah. in general, you know, you don't have, it just doesn't work. And like I said, at 57, I still sit there and go, you know, what does this, you know, I'm not sure. And is, am I, am I getting, is it just my personal feelings or mm -hmm. is it, you know, spirit? So, you know, putting it, putting yourself out there with, like I said, whether you're at 19 or 57, we always have doubts. You know, everybody exactly. does you just have to learn to understand, to believe in what your, what your gut is telling you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's like, you know, I believe in what I do. I can tell you. But then there's some things where it's like, you know, for example, when there's opportunities that come up, it's like, okay, do I take it? Do I not take mm -hmm. it? Is it going to be beneficial or not? Because we're jumping into the unknown. You know, we can love the unknown. We can hate the unknown. You know, excuse my friendship, but I'll tell you, it's shit scary at times because you don't mm -hmm. know what you're getting yourself involved in. But you have to take risks and even in relationships for me you know when people are finding relationships or particularly when it's my you know friends and family whatever you know they can say i'm judgmental and stuff like that but unfortunately i can see it now for me i've never been in a proper relationship right mm -hmm. but it's spirit it's me being aware it's me saying you know being alert of what's going on you know understanding that you know okay this i can't put two and two together you know but for me, I feel like sometimes, you know, I love what I do. There's a lot of pros, but sometimes there's a lot of cons of actually doing it at a young age. And, you know, I know it's something that I'm going to have to learn how to have a normal human life as well. But mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, I truly thank Spirit because they have changed my life in so many different ways. The only con about it is really when you're meeting friends or wanting to go, you know, develop a relationship or whatever, sometimes you can read in their lives too quickly. But I truly believe if when I find the right person, I won't be able to read for them at all. It will just be one of those spontaneous connections mm -hmm. and, you know, it will happen like that. But, you know, Spirit, the universe, they've got a perfect plan for us. Oh, yeah. And there's not always just one perfect person. And no. I, I, have, I have a friend that I met. I met, and thank God for Facebook, um, I met her on Facebook. And, uh, we just connected in, in a, in a Facebook group and it just, it just sort of clicked, you know, I'll, we'll be talking and I'll say something and she'll finish my sentence. And she's just, I just, I, I call her my goddess, you know, because it, it, I know that we've been a friendship for many, many lifetimes, but yeah. there's that connection. It's deep and it goes back and it's far. And it's, it's, it's like, she's not my, my, twin flame you know because i'm not in love with her but um you know she she's but i love her because she is she is my other half you know but yet you know there is still 
my husband at this moment in time, at this moment in time, he's still alive because I love him. No, <laughs> you know, yeah. but there's that connection. There's a different connection. So everybody that's in your life is a different connection. So, but um, I also know that, um, sorry, going here, um, there will be somebody in your future um, that will sure. connect with you. And, and I don't see it being, hold it, sorry, far off. Okay, sorry, got a shiver there. <laughs> you know, so, yes, again, okay. Yeah, see, you're my guest and I'm getting it for you. Um, so there will be somebody coming for you. 100%. You know, so it's just, and, it's just really fun. It's going to be fun. And that's the thing. You know, I'm open to whatever happens and whatever it be. But at the end of the day, you know, you just got to trust that, you know, I, exactly. I for me, I. I just, for me, I just want to build my empire first. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so when you build your empire, you help me build mine. Because you've right, been here a lot longer than I am. <laughs> Actually, I've, I've been, I've been to both sides of the of the the spectrum. Neither place wants me, so I'm here for an eternity. <laughs> okay, exactly. we are at seven forty. So if anybody in the chat room would like a reading, pipe up now so that you know that that Alex can connect with you. Um, we'll start off with, uh, with Moa because I am the one here. Um, so if you, if you're up to it, um, and spirit has anything to let me know, please, you know, let me know. Um, oh gosh, old legs. <laughs> oh, you know. um, go ahead. Go ahead. That, I said that, you know, old legs, that's the only downside of aging. <laughs> mm -hmm. Plus I did some snow shoveling today. Oh, uh, yeah. See where I had that in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a name for you, um, Nick Fox. Have you ever heard of him? Nick Fox? No, I haven't. You should. You should check him out on Facebook. He is another Australian, and he's adorable. Yeah. And 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 I think you guys would get along. The friendship that would that because your bubbly is will match his bubbly, and I. Th think he's in is in Brisbane, I'm not sure Brisbane or Melbourne, but he's somewhere down there. And I know a lot of people usually like when they say I'm in Canada, uh, do you know so and so from Canada? Like Canada's a huge ass country, excuse me, but and I'm sure <laughs> Australia is also a huge ass country, but I think you're in the same neighborhood ish. So yeah. but check out Nick Fox. I think I think your uh, your your energies will ma will mesh because he is he is adorable, he is funny, he is he is Oh my God! Hey, I'll definitely I have all of you. I mean, in, yeah. the information. And and if your friend will come and say, "Mama D sent me." <laughs> Beautiful. It's, he's been on my show a few times as well. Oh, it's quiet in the chat room tonight. Everybody's enthralled into our conversations. Oh. I also have a, a new name for you: the Psychic Chef. <laughs> the talking chef. Yes, I was just waiting until we're going to talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You could, you know, be making people, um, making exactly. people their food and, and doing readings at the same time. A uh, friend, Dorothy Holder, who's in uh, New Zealand, she yep. actually does food readings. Food readings? Yes. You, uh, I think she was, she was on last week or a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. And you would put, uh, I would choose what what food attracts me. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jackie. What food attracts me at that moment in time? And, and she would be able to read who you are, the type of person that you are from your choice of food at that moment in time. It's like, you know, it's just it, it, very interesting. So you know, if I order a chocolate mousse, does that mean I'm quite sweet? I've got, you know, a lot of different layers. I've got that, well, you know. Depends on the picture. You have to put the picture in and she, she can tell you. It depends, you know, because you can say a chocolate mousse and there's in, a, in, in, on Google, there's 500 different pictures of a chocolate mousse, but it depends on the one that you pick. Let's just think, you know, a typical chocolate mousse, you know, it's bubbly, it's airy, it's wavy, it's light. So, you know, if you're in for someone, it's like, oh, chocolate mousse, you know, you're quite bubbly, you're quite airy, you're mm -hmm. quite light, you know. You've yeah. got the chocolate, which is the sweets part, you know, whatever. I reckon that'd be interesting. Yeah, it is. Uh, I will give you the link 
Uh, actually, we couldn't end up doing it because I, I figured out one of my issues with my with my computer is because I was doing a uh, Wi-Fi, but now I'm hardwired to the so to the thing. So we had to um, we did a Facebook Live instead mm-hmm. of doing a show here. So I will find the Facebook Live and tag you to it, so you could uh, you get to hear what she uh, what she reads on the the. I don't think there was. I'm not sure if I was able to put pictures into the chat or not because yeah. Facebook Live is a little bit more difficult than than this, you know. Yeah, I'm with you. But yeah, she's she's pretty good at that, you know. She my 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 little sister put in her food choices, and she uh, I think Tracy Cavanaugh in the chat room also put in her food choices. Uh, she put in a picture, and I you'd have to ask Tracy, but I think she got her pretty good. It's fun wow. when. when then things change. It's a change. Like I've heard of people uh, well, eating I, um, popcorn. Like, oh, yeah. Well, it's all like you know, divination, divination. If you think about it, you know, you got cards, you got oracle cards, mm-hmm. you've got you know, um, the shamans used to use rocks, bones, um, you know, tea, you know, leaf readings, flowers, or anything like that. You know, uh, you can get a message from anything, even if it's crystals. Yes. So okay. it just goes to show is that anything is, per, you know, anything is per, possible with whatever you're reading, and that's the important thing. You know, you have to read tarot cards if you want to get some rocks and read the rocks. You know, have the person mm-hmm. shuffle the rocks, and you know, you'd be amazed at what you can pick up, even scrying with crystal balls and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Hold on a second. Uh. Yeah, that was the night we went from thing. <laughs> we had to go to Facebook for the readings. Yep. Um, yeah, because I mean, look, scrying, uh, way back in the day, and Eric's not here to, to confirm or deny this one, but he's the one who told me about it. Scrying back in the day was because, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't be, uh, a psychic or a medium, you know, because then it, there was negative connotations to it. But, you know, you as the medium could go to somebody's house, just, oh, I'm just going over to, you know, Darlene's house for a cup of tea. And you either read tea leaves or they ask for a bowl of water. And, you know, it, there's amazing things that what you can use to, to get your messages from. Exactly. And that's the thing, you know, you don't have to, you know, be fancy and have tarot cards or anything like that. You can look in a crystal ball. You can, you know, even um, get a glass mirror or anything like that. Even palmistry, you know, palmistry, reading energies or anything like that. There's always messages to be read, but it's a matter of how you work. It's like the one thing that fascinates me is coffee cups, to be honest with you. Coffee cups, tea leaf reading, stuff like that, because you're drinking from that. You're putting your mm-hmm. energy, you're putting your DNA, and people read these lines and images, and that's the thing. Whereas if you're very clairvoyant, you know, which is clairvoyance is like clear seeing, it's basically, you know, seeing through your third eye. So, you know, me, I'm clairvoyant. Basically, a medium has all the clairs. So they're clairvoyant, they're clairsentient, they're claircognizant, um, clairgustance and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you're able to sense different things, and that's the thing. With, um, with you know, your clairvoyance, you're seeing for your third eye, which is like movie clips or movie reels and stuff like that. So, you know, it's interesting. If you develop it and you explore it, amazing things can happen. Exactly. Um Okay, so so far nobody who's in the chat room has piped up for reading, so I will, because we don't have a whole lot of time left, so if you have something for me from Spirit. Let's see, I want to know if you can, um, the direction of my show, because as most people know. The um, direction of your show. Yeah, because this this platform is, is closing for the show, so I, I yeah. need to find a new platform and where to do my show, so let's Fair see enough. if you for me on that one. A bit of your show and a bit of general, whatever needs to come up. Sorry? Love it. I said it will do a bit of a direction for you and a bit of yeah. whatever needs to come up. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Uh, what's your date of birth, sweetheart? November 20th, 1961. I'm old. <laughs> 20th of November, 1961. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. All right. Let's have a look what we need to know for you. Beautiful. All right. Okay, let's have a look. 20, 11, 1, 9, 6, 1. Yep, 20, 11. 
So I'm just doing your numbers quickly. I might as well do it proper for you. There you go. Yep, beautiful. All right, straight away, just by your numbers, 20th of the 11th, 1961. 11, you've got the 11 in there, so you are quite psychic yourself, obviously. 11s, 22s, 33s in neurology, it's what we call as the master numbers. So people with that are quite psychic. Um, they're psychic mediums. They're the highly, you know, um, intelligent ones as well. So you would have found yourself at a young, as a younger child, you're quite of the hyperactive child. Does that make sense? <laughs> so yeah. you would have been the one who would have been like, you know what, sit there, don't move. But I want to move. I want to look. You know, oh, that's curious. Oh, that nice glass shiny object. Let's touch it. And your mum says, don't touch it. You've got to touch it. That's you. Because you've got that inquisitive nature. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So with, with that inquisitive nature, you're able to, you know, start to sense things. You're able to feel things. But being the 11 is that you're the highest medium of all, meaning that not the highest, but, you know, you're the most, um, you're quite gifted yourself. So 11s are like basically, you know, the tall, you know, look at me, type high, I'm here. Whereas 22 space reads, they're lower in the, in the terms. But 11 in the master number is like the highest master. Now, in saying that, for you to say, you know, yes, you are a master or anything like that, you need to go through your triumphs, your tribute, your tribute, um, I can't even talk now, your triumphs and all your challenges in life. But basically with that, you know, once you go through those triumphs, you know, you learn to find who you are as a person. Because to me, it shows that, you know, at a younger age, I don't feel like your life was the easiest. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because I won't get I don't I won't get too personal, but I feel like there was a lot of issues with the family as well. So I want to say to you, is Dad passed or is Dad here? He's passed. Fair enough, because I keep getting shown a connection to Dad. Was Dad the smoker? Sorry. Did Dad used to love his cigarettes? Yeah, he gave them up towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, because I keep getting shown, I keep seeing, I keep seeing him in the back. I want to say, I don't know if you call it, you know, uh, it's hard to say because I'm from Australia, right? But, you know, in your backyard, did you guys have like some sort of porch or like some sort of table when you're um, back in the, you know, obviously when you're younger? I just see Dad smoking. It's like, you know, he was that social Connecticut, but I feel like he also kept a lot of his own emotions to his own self. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yes, that does. Yeah. Yeah. Was he in a, um, I hate to get personal, but did he used to love the drinking a bit too much? No, I don't think so. Well, not that we, not that we saw as children, so I can't be 100% Better. Because to me, I just feel like there would have been like some sort of backlash or, you know, I feel like he could be quite, I feel like he was a masculine man, but I feel like he could be a bit rough at times. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, and I want to say to you, for you and him, it's like, I don't feel like you had the best relationship, but I feel like there's mm -hmm. a lot of remorse around that. So there's the apology around that because I feel like he was a nice, he was a nice fellow. I feel like, you know, he was well presented in life. Mm -hmm. I feel like work was important for him. He keeps saying to me, work, 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 work. That was all about him, basically. Yeah. And I feel like it was hard because you both never really had that time. Now, mind you, Darlene, just to confirm to everyone, I don't really know you at all, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I haven't really, you know, we've only chatted about the radio show, but we haven't talked about our lot, your lives or anything like that. So mm -hmm. for me, this is something um, that's coming through as well. I want to talk about um, Dad coming through. So I know you want to know about the radio show, but Dad's like, hello, I'm here. I want to talk. I want to you know, pass some messages on. Um, Mum's still here, correct? Nope, Mum's gone too. But I feel like mum's around. So with mum, I feel like she's always guiding you. She's always watching you in that way. Now, um, mum had the cancer, correct? I believe so, yes. She yeah. Had and, yeah. And did dad have a heart attack or some sort of stroke? Because he keeps talking about blood issues. So I don't know if he had high blood pressure as well. I, I believe that it was his heart that, that took him from us, yes. Fair enough, because I keep getting shown there's that connection as well, because there is that part of, you know, there's blood issues, there's this and all that. So I want to say to you, please let your parents are around you. You see mum quite a lot, it's specifically um, in your own house. I feel like the hallway to your living room, I feel like you always see the shadow walk past. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so this is her coming through, and she wants you to know that. Obviously, you do believe, so you are quite aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. What it's saying to me, you know, in everything at the moment, I feel like, you know, yes, you're at a bit of a crossroad, and that crossroad, you're trying to work out, where do I go? Do I go here? Do I go there? 
what opportunities or what directions am I going to take? But the thing it says to me is that I feel like don't rush because you're that type of person who wants it now, basically. <laughs> you don't want to wait. You yeah. don't want to wait. It's like, you know, I hate patience. I hate this. I need to get going. Uh-huh. So it's saying to me, because your life path numbers are 21, 21 equals a three. Threes are all about, you know, creativity. You know, they're all they're, they're creative people. So you've got that way where you've got to harness in all different types of talents. So whether it's drawing, painting, creative arts or anything like that, threes are highly empath as, empathic as well. So I feel like the radio show, you will get an opportunity, but I feel like it's going to grow bigger for you. I feel like you need to look at your platforms. I feel like you need to look at your marketing and everything like that because it's going to be a lot of big opportunities starting to unfold for you, um, particularly within the next couple of months as well so I don't know um, you know I don't know if you are working currently or what you're doing but I feel like there's going to be a career change coming up for you as well within the later of this year because I feel like at the moment you're trying to look at ways for obviously for your financial benefits but it's saying to me that you need to start looking at your options now because there's going to be a lot of um, amazing turnovers coming for you as well just be mindful with your own health I don't really talk about health a lot um, because obviously I'm not a doctor, you know, obviously see a GP with things, but I just feel like you're neglecting your own health just a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm sticking my tongue out at you. So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's important that you look after yourself around that. Are you very much of a coffee drinker? Do you love your coffee? No. I mean, I love it, but it doesn't love me, so I don't drink it. Fair enough. I don't know. I just keep getting sure. It's like, you know, you need coffee or you're addicted to something. So I don't know if it's like, you know, the sugars or I don't know. There's something around that. It's like you've got this sort of addiction. It's like, oh, my God, I want it. I want it. Chocolate. <laughs> okay. Well, there you go. Fair enough. We all love our chocolate. Even though I put my hand up. It's like, yes. <laughs> I'm like to myself, I'm like to myself now. It's like, oh, can I go to shop and buy some chocolate now? <laughs> mm-hmm. I can get it wherever it so, hmm. Oh, you're lucky. Send me some then. <laughs> nah. But I think at the moment, you know, things are going to be okay. You're not sleeping properly, honey. So it's saying to me, look after your sleep. Um, you know, I feel like there's those parts at the moment of things will be better. But to me, there's a bit of conflicts at the moment. So I feel like conflicts within your own self, conflicts with family, conflicts with work, everything like that. But I feel like this radio show, I feel like it's giving you amazing opportunities to grow. But I feel like they need to look at their avenues. Because to me, I don't know how much I can say on here or anything like that. But I feel like there needs to be more financial support to keep things going, if that if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Yeah. So, um, you know, I feel like a lot of amazing talents are happening for you, but this is where you need to start to put yourself out there. I want to say to you, not only that, but you need to do more healings, get back into your readings, get back into everything like that. Yes. Because you can grow it. And the thing with me, if anyone's had a reading with me, and I, I know Julianne can relate if Julianne's still here, um, don't take offense, but I'm very good at giving people kick up the asses. <laughs> oh, I felt that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't mean what I say. I always say in this game of all my readings, don't take offense to what I say, you know, because sometimes I can basically be brutally honest, but it's something where people need to understand that, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat people. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. Um, Julianne in the chat room said, I'm here. Yes, he is. <laughs> so, Basically, there's that. But I think there's going to be a lot of opportunities coming for you. Just be mindful with your new partner. Your partner is a beautiful guy, but you both need more communication. Oh, hell yeah. Well, he's a man. I can't communicate with a man. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, there's that. So, yes. you know, there is that 100%. But I think things will be all right for you. I wouldn't be too worried. Cool. Thank you very much. Pleasure, sweetheart. Yeah. Um, da, 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 da. okay. Uh, I think uh, Tracy in the chat room had said she wanted a reading because I believe she put her birth date in. There's another young one, Tracy. Please answer me. Tracy, Tracy Kavanaugh. Tracy, she's a she's a friend of mine here, so I'll be like, mm-hmm. okay. So she said yes. So her birth date is March 29th, 1970. Yep. So obviously, January, very March. Yep. Okay. Well, Tracy's got the 11 as well straight away. So she will understand what I mean by the 11 aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, straight away, Spirit say to me, Tracy, why aren't you doing any readings or healings yourself? Seriously, woman. <laughs> okay. I'm going to mute myself. 
All right, let's have a look. All right. So, Tracy, do you have a question in mind, or do you just want something general, or what? There's a couple of seconds delay on our... All right. And that's if she's paying attention. No I'm kidding, she always does. <laughs> She'll like stop me at work tomorrow, going, "Darlene, I was." Fair enough. So I Let's think see. you guys are quite close. Yeah, I, I think she just Beautiful. wants a general. Well, let's just start with the general, and if she has a question, she'll chat. She'll All pop right. into the chat room, and we'll see. Beautiful. Let's have a look what I need to know for Tracy. Beautiful. All right. Look, straight away, Spirit's got me into... Okay, there's a lot of different messages for Tracy. I feel like Tracy is... She's someone who's a bit... How can I word it? She needs to make sure she's got her foundations properly set before she can jump. So what I mean by that is that she needs to make sure that... Um, let's say, for example, she's going to get a new job opportunity, right? She needs mm -hmm. to make sure that, you know, she reads the fine print, she reads everything carefully before she jumps because she doesn't like to take that risk. And for her, it's like, you know, she likes to take risks, but she needs to make sure that it's the, you know, the most... Um, how can I say? Not pleasant. I just feel like it needs to be the most... Um, I can't even talk now. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it just needs to be the right way, basically, because for her, it's, you know, her life path numbers are four. And fours are all about, you know, um, setting, you know, laying your foundations, you know, making sure that you've got that structure. So structure is important for her. So with whatever opportunity she takes, she needs to make sure that everything is okay for her in that way. Um, I want to say to Tracy particularly that she needs to start to trust herself a little bit more. And what I mean by trusting is that she needs to make sure that, you know, she actually listens to her own intuition. Because I feel like between you and Darlene, I feel like you guys constantly arguing between her not trusting her intuition. <laughs> Shutting up here. <laughs> <laughs> because they just keep getting shown there's like this there's like this um basically it's like outside chatter it's like you know oh my god you know i need to do this i need to do this i need to do that it's like okay you know we need to start to trust that intuition because i feel like there's that expansion happening for her as well now tracy i don't know if there is some sort of job change or consideration coming up for you honey so i'm not too sure what you do for work so if you can drop it down in the chat um i feel like for you it's more that you know you enjoy your work but i feel like it's quite political at times, meaning I feel like you're trying to either um, get yourself out there or you're wanting to look at different um, different ways for you to accommodate your skills because I feel like you are this healer. You are this person who wants to help many people, but it's important for you to help your own self at times. So I'm not too sure if this will make sense for you, Tracy, but let me know. Okay, so I'll just wait for confirmation. Yeah. And even with you, darling, it's important for us to have confirmation because when we're reading for people, you know, you need to make sure that you are on track because obviously you can say anything and everything and mm -hmm. sometimes you might get too carried away in this aspect or you can get too carried away in that aspect. Very true, very true. I wonder why there's a slow response. Hey, Tracy, wakey, wakey. <laughs> what are my spirit guides saying? <laughs> See, she's a slow response here. That I think would be her question. Okay. Um, well, how 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 far is the time difference between us? Uh, Ten hours, twelve hours. Yeah. It's so basically, so basically, I'm in the future. You guys are in the past. <laughs> you are our future. I know. Goodness, you're nineteen. You are our future. <laughs> All right. Tracy, Tracy. I know Tracy's job is she's a teacher. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so, Tracy, I feel like for you, what are your spirit guides saying? I feel like, you know, they're saying to me there's movement for you, there's flexibility. Um, I keep getting shown that, you know, you are highly spiritual, but I feel like you want to start working with more people who are needing help. Um, you are so right, I don't trust my intuition. Well, clearly, your guides are saying that. Um, what it's saying to me is that, you know, there's changes happening for you. At the moment, it's been a bit murky. It's been a bit rough at the moment. It's like, you know, you're traveling these seas. You're going through rough waters and that. But it's saying to me that there's going to be an opportunity coming for you. So, okay, beautiful teacher. I feel like, look, 
teaching is great for you, but I feel like, you know, you don't get enough appreciation for your work. So it's saying to me to make sure that you stand your ground at times because, you know, yes, you want to teach people, you want to help them with their learnings and stuff like that, but I feel like you need to get appreciation for yourself. So I don't know if you are looking at going into a higher position where it's, you know, um, coordinating or leadership or anything like that. I feel like please make note that there will be some sort of job change for you because I feel like at the moment you want to juggle all different things. You want to start looking at teaching, you want to start looking at spirituality and everything like that. So I feel like have a look at that. Um, also, have you been thinking about writing a book or becoming an author? I keep thinking something about writing a book. So let me know about that one. She's in the middle of two jobs and a little confused. Well, that explains the job confusion. Mm-hmm. I'm in the middle of two jobs and a little confused, yeah. Look, I feel like for you, it's like the one that I feel like the one that's um, you're currently holding on to. So the first job, look, I feel like the first job, I feel like you've been there for a while. The second job, I feel like it's fairly new, but I feel like you're a bit unsure to actually take that. Are these both part-time jobs? Because I feel like one could potentially lead into full-time work. So, oh, wait. Haha, uh -huh, you are the future. Yes. <laughs> I told you there's a time delay. <laughs> Get in on real. Not good. Tracy, <laughs> type faster. Well, Tracy, that's the thing. How are you Tracy... writing a book? <laughs> Look, Tracy, I think for you, whatever you decide to do, I feel like it will work out. But I feel like right now, your important message for you from Spirit is to trust yourself and to make sure that whatever you want to do, it's going to be best for you. Because I feel like the job change needs to be worked on because this is what's affecting you at the moment. But I feel like there's a job. I don't know if this is the first job that you've had. I am living a crazy divorce. Fair enough. Fair enough, because I keep getting shown there's like some sort of betrayal, defeat, or envy around that. So there's a lot of jealousy within workplaces as well. With your divorce, you know, you'll get there, but I feel like you need to look after yourself now. So connect to yourself. Meditate. Start trusting your intuition. Start developing that. And I feel like set your regime up so it's more like, you know, I want to meditate. I want to do this. But I think, Tracy, for you, things will be all right. So... That's what I'm going to say for you, gorgeous. Many blessings with your journey, but I feel like um, you need to look at your career because whatever choice you do, I feel like it will be great, but I feel like you need to look at the second job for now. So that is what I want to say to you. Hopefully it's made sense. Yay. Okay, she's typing again. <laughs> um, okay, um, the next one is Larry, and his numbers are 22451. All right. Larry, how can I help? Would you have a question or what are you after? And uh, Tracy said, oh, my gosh, I have thought of writing just recently. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. You know, that's the thing. Once we start writing and we start connecting things, you know, that's what happens. So I feel like there's definitely going to be a book for you. All right, Larry. Larry is talking Life direction, and life direction and decisions. Life directions and decisions, okay. Okay, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. All right. Look, Larry, the very first thing I want to say to you, you worry about family too much. And what I want to say to you is... Um, with that, I feel like, you know, at the moment, your mind's going tick, 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 tick. So you're worried about every little thing at the moment. I don't know if you're recently um, single or you're having issues with a relationship or you're um, not happy in a relationship or anything like that. I just feel like they're saying to me that there's going to be some sort of relationship change or something around that. Now, what it's saying um, to me with that is that if you are in a relationship, there obviously needs to be more communication. Um, there obviously needs to be more work around that. But if you aren't in a relationship, I feel like there's definitely going to be someone coming through for you. Um, it's saying to me over the next six to eight months, there's going to be a lot of changes around your personal self as well. You being the six, you hold on to everyone's problems. You're the nurturer, you're the giver, you're the receiver. And it's saying to me that, you know, you need to make sure that you have time for yourself. Life directions and decisions. 
I feel for you it's more that you want to find a place that you can settle down and retire and all of that. But you're also a businessman. So I feel like there's a lot of business ideas that are coming your way. So um, saying to me, um, whatever directions you want to take, start to have a look around that. Does that make sense with the relationship, Larry? Like the confirmation. Unclear. Unclear. So, unclear meaning you're not in a relationship or unclear that it doesn't make sense? How would you take unclear, darling? I, I think he's not in a relationship at the moment. Because that's what I feel. I feel like it doesn't it, it, make sense. What you said didn't make sense to him. Okay, fair enough. If it doesn't make sense, take it on board. I just feel like that there's something going on with your relationship at the moment. So it may be that you, know, you need more communication or anything like that, but I feel like there's going to be some changes around that. Just to make sure, can you please confirm if you are in a relationship or not in a relationship? Hard to define. Okay, well, there we go. There we go. The only reason I'm saying that is because I feel like there's that pause, there's that stillness. And the reason why I'm asking these questions is because I'm when I'm connected to the relationship energy, it's like everything's scrambled. That's why I'm like, are you in a relationship? Are you not in a relationship? What's going on? Because when you're saying to me it's hard to define, I feel like, to be honest with you, you both got baggage. And what I mean by baking, I feel like you've both had a hard previous past around that. Have you, Larry, just got out of a divorce or some sort of settlement around that? Because I keep being shown that whether it's you or this partner, I feel like there's a lot of baggage around that with emotions, you know, past relationships, everything like that. I feel like you both need to be open in terms of what's going on and talk about, you know, where do we stand? Because I feel like there is potential to actually go further. But it's a bit like we're holding ourselves back because we don't want to make any wrong decisions around that. So I feel like have a look at your options. I feel like play it close because I feel like where you both are heading, I feel like it's going to be okay. But I also feel like there's a bit of a distance around that. So distance between, you know, could be travel-wise, distance in terms of your communication, whatever it may be, I feel like you need to look at that because I feel like relationships are your main priority at the moment because you want to find someone to settle down. You want to start to have that connection. But right now, it's all about listening to where does Larry want to go, if that makes sense. So you're saying that Larry has to listen. Larry knows what to do. He just has to listen to himself. Correct. He definitely knows what he needs to do. He needs to understand, you know, the whole situations and everything like that to go through. Because what's happening for him is that, you know, he wants to develop it but there's a lot of unsureness. And when we're in that unsureness period or in that phase, it's difficult because it's like, do they love me? Do they not love me? Do I do this? Do I not do that? But I feel like for him, he needs to take a risk. But to me, it's more that I feel like with Larry, I feel like his energy is very scattered at the moment, meaning that, you know, when your energy is scattered, it's hard to really pinpoint what do I want to do. But the relationship to me, there is that chance, but I feel like it's going to be a lot of movement for him. Good fortune is coming your way, so there's going to be a lot of cycles changing. But at the moment, you're going through a reflection period. So you're starting to look at the last six years, seven years, eight years, ten years, whatever it may be. So, you know, I think like emotionally it can be quite hard for Larry. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense, Larry, but I feel like take her on board with the relationship. Because you know your decisions. You just need to make it come to fruition. Dealing um, with ill person. Yes. Yes, it's I get that, but I feel like if you can make it if you can make it all in time and make the most out of it, I feel like you'll be fine with it. So I think I'll leave that one there. Okay. So yeah. thank you for your question, Larry. I hope that helps, Larry. 
Okay, we now have Kathy, Kathy D. Her numbers are 11, 12, 55. Happy day. All right, let's have a look. All right, Kathy, do you have a question? I think there is a very crazy. All right, Kathy D is typing. Not really wondered. Okay, beautiful. All right. Kathy, the very first thing I want to say to you, do you have three children? Because I keep getting a very strong connection between three children in your way, but I also feel like if there's either been, I hate to be private and personal, but I also feel like there's either been some sort of miscarriage or something around that. I keep getting shown three because you're like a mother to everyone, basically. The very first thing I want to talk about is another grandchild coming your way as well, because I keep seeing, shown, I keep getting shown grandchildren coming. So, um, if you can confirm, that would be amazing. Okay, grandchildren. Let's have a look. I don't know yet. Fair enough. Possible. Fair enough. Possible. Okay, because what I get shown is I feel like there's going to be a pregnancy coming. So I feel like there'll be announcements. This is not going to happen until the next couple of months. Um, <laughs> you have six. Okay, wow. You're a, you're a, you're a mum of many. Um, yeah. What it's saying to me, <laughs> what it's saying to me is I feel like there's going to be um, grandchildren coming your way. The next four to six months is quite prominent within the future of the children. Um, I feel like do you you currently got about I want to say four, at least four to five grandchildren already. If not, I feel like you're going to have a very big family coming your way for you, Kathy. The thing I need to say to you is stop worrying about your daughter particularly. Um, I don't know I don't know which daughter they're referring to, but I keep getting shown there's a lot of stress or there's a lot of um, concerns around a daughter at the moment. But not only that, you're quite stressed about all the family, really. You want to make sure that everyone's okay. Are they doing the right thing? Are they fine? This, 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 that. You're always worried about, you know, the family, and I can completely understand. You know, family is important for you. Um, it's saying to me that, you know, at the moment that there has been um, a little bit of up and down time. So I feel like there's been some sort of illness or some sort of health concern. Um, it could be a great, it could be a great grandkid. Maybe, potentially. Whoever the person is, I just feel like there's some sort of concern around that. I also feel like there's some sort of health issue as well. So that's what I need to bring through. Um, is your mum passed or is she still living, Kathy? Because I keep getting shown there's a can there's a connection there around cancer or some sort of um breathing difficulties. So I don't know if your mother had the cancer. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, passed. Okay. And did she have some sort of cancer problem or something around that? Cancer, beautiful. Okay. Because the very first thing I want to say to you is I've got a grandmother's presence around here. And, uh, sorry, um, uh, your mother's presence around here. And what she's saying to me is I feel like there's a lot of breathing difficulties. I also feel like that there was a lot of, um, you know, obviously, um, she keeps saying to me, was she on some sort of, like, ventilator or breathing um breathing tube because I keep getting shown there's a lot of tightness around my throat and it's like I can't swallow properly or anything like that so I don't know if she needed some sort of feeding tubes or anything around that because when I look at her earlier life you know she was that humble lady I feel like she was happy as Larry I feel like she was very much of that prim and proper posh lady as well um and what it's saying to me is that, you know, she wants to say to her, say to you, thank you for everything you've done for her. Because I feel like you dropped everything to help her in order for her to go through her cancer and everything like that. Because I feel like for her, her cancer was quite serious. I feel like it was stage four cancer. But she's saying to me that I feel like that there was more, that was more that could have been happened or there could have been more treatments. I don't know if you blame yourself for that you should have been there or whatever it may be, but she keeps saying to me that you should have, um, that's like, you know, you couldn't have done everything that you needed to. So I feel like that's where you need to understand that. So um, Kathy, Kathy said, yes, I was there, beautiful, because she thanks you quite a lot. She thanks you a lot for being there. She thanks you for devoting your time because I feel like you are really the only one in the family who really devoted your time to be there and look after her. So I don't know if you're the eldest one. I took FMLA. What's that? I have no idea. 
Family medical leave, maybe, possibly? I have no idea. Family medical leave of absence. Nope. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Family medical leave of absence. Okay, beautiful. Right. There you go. You are spot on there. <laughs> um, okay, they can't fire you. Yeah, fair enough. Because I feel like um, in the USA, yep. Well, I'm from Australia, so I'm not too sure what, what the goes and the laws are over there. Um, but, you know, I feel like she wants to say to me that she thanks you quite a lot for it because you took your time off to devote that time for her. I feel like it wasn't easy, but if it wasn't, with, if it wasn't without you, I don't feel like she would have got as far because I feel like it was family who would have helped, but you devoted all your time to her. She wants to thank you for always bringing the flowers. I keep getting showing the fresh smell flowers, particularly roses or I think it's daisies or tulips, whatever it may be. But she was floral. She loved her flowers. She loved everything like that. If that makes sense. But she also talks about her stubborn husband as well. So I feel like I feel like I feel like um your father I feel like is quite stubborn as well. Is he also crossed over? She said, Don't bring them when I was dead. <laughs> He's alive. Fair enough, because I just feel like she talks about your stubborn father. Now, I don't know if he's too stubborn, but yeah, I just get stubborn father, stubborn, stubborn, stubborn. It's like he needs to watch himself a little bit as well, because I feel like you're always, you're always kicking dad up the ass to be like, you know, um, you know, you're always kicking dad, make sure you're okay, make sure you're this, make sure you're that, because that's the thing around that. And I want to say to you, mum, thanks you a lot, because I feel like mum had a bit of OCD. Things have to be in order, things have to be precise for her. I feel like everything like that. Yes, he does. He he fell for offence. Wow. Wow, okay. All right. They're saying to me, he's going to be fine. I feel like you just need to look after yourself right now. But I feel like at this point, I want to say to you, please let your mother's around here. Um, no OCD. Okay. Yeah. Look, I just feel like, you know, things are going to be fine, but I feel like right now you're finding yourself. Please know that mum loves you and adores you, but I feel like at the moment things are going to get better for you. So um, that's what I want to say for you, Cappy. So I want to try and keep the reading short as possible because obviously we're going to be here for hours and hours. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And we're almost out of time. Oh, well, there we go. Not a problem. So I wish you all the very best to everyone. Well, there's... Tracy, um, your your message from your spirit guides, there, there's a big lag for Tracy, uh, was, if I remember correctly, you need to trust your, your intuition. Get off your duff, lady, and what I've been telling you, and do what you know that you can do, but you have doubts on. So that was from your spirit guides with my quick translation. <laughs> Beautiful. Right? And that's the thing, you know, we, have, we, we hold on to so many doubts and fears and all that. But if we remove them, you know, we can do amazing things. It's like me. You know, I started building my business at the age of 15, 16, and now to look where I am. So, you know, I've got expos and I've got, you know, all that coming up. So it's important. If you want to get somewhere, you need to trust it. Exactly, exactly. Well, we're going to bring this one to a close because, as I said, when the show started out, my husband cooking spaghetti and my house is smelling like spaghetti sauce and I'm, like, dying of hunger. My tummy's yeah. making some noise. I thought you guys could hear it. And as yeah. you're talking about spaghetti, I'm looking at only 12.30 here in the afternoon on the Monday and I'm like to myself, mm, what can I have for lunch now? It's like, oh, a pie sounds nice and a sausage roll. <laughs> ah, okay, well, I'm going to have spaghetti for you. But right, I need to thank you big time for coming on my show. And um, here we go. We got into the food. Kathy just made a casserole. <laughs> oh, that is yummy. You know, you know my favorite food is just quickly lasagna. Lasagna? Oh, my God. That's, that's, that's what happens with the leftover spaghetti sauce because we always make too much. Yum. Yum, exactly. All you right. make me hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> I told you fair warning. It always comes down to food here. Yeah. Wow. Alex, I thank you very much. And, and Jackie in the chat room said it was like listening to her daughter's story. Um, oh, blessing. Jackie's wow. always very quiet until it comes to food. By the way, thank you, Jackie. Um, I got the pizza. <laughs> um, <laughs> but 
I will say thank you, and you can come back on any time. But like I said, for now, I don't know where my new uh, home will be. Angel Angel Meadows is always going to be here. Uh, the website, but the conversation, <laughs> that face, the conversation with exactly. Phantom will find a new home to, to be, and it will the show will stay at the same name, not like when I changed last time. I changed my names, but conversation with friends that will still happen, and you will always be welcome to come back on my show no matter where I am. Well, I appreciate that. It has been amazing, and I hope that, you know, I could share my story to everyone and just, you know, make get everyone out there to believe in themselves a little bit more. It's never easy, but we've got to do what we've got to do. And, Darlene, I really appreciate it because when you first messaged me, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like, no, you know what, let's do it. So I appreciate everything that you do, and I'm sure that you've got many, um, so much support out there as well. Well, so when somebody you. says yes, then I poke and prod until I can get them down to a date. So you said yes, and I was like, okay, we're just gonna get you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm All kind right. of stubborn that way. Well, I thank you, everybody. And uh, Dara Christie wants to know who has come to see her daughter every night. Ooh, if we can do this one quickly, we got five minutes. Uh, I actually uh, feel like I want to say to you, your daughter's quite, her daughter's quite young, correct? Yes, her daughter's. Her daughter is she about is she about six or so the daughter? I think younger. Because what it's saying to me is I feel like there's I don't I don't I can't remember if your mother's passed or whoever. I feel like it's family spirits, but I also feel like um I feel like your home is also the home's got a lot of activity. Now not in a bad way, but I feel like it's a bit that there's been some um other spirits there. Nothing scary, but I feel like your daughter's quite open as well. So honestly, get some sage, cleanse the house, I wouldn't be too worried. Hmm. I think it was a granddaughter. Baby wakes every morning at every night at two AM. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of spirit around the, in that house. So have a look around that. I feel like with the daughter, um, I thought daughter is quite, op uh, you know, quite open. But you need to realize that children are very psychic themselves. They're born, so they they've got a very strong imagination. So anything they see and they feel, they're able to, you know, use that. They're able to sense different things. So hundred um, percent, I would be scared to come your way. If this is really does mean it's time for us to find off. Hi, Gemini. Sorry you came late. But we're just finding off, sugar. Uh, there's always next week. Um, Alex, you're gone into the static mode again. Uh, again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out in the chat room and being open to to um, Alex's readings. And Julianne, if, welcome to the craziness. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys all next week. Not too sure who my guest is at the moment. I think we got a free night, so we'll have to see what happens. Happy nineteen, happy twenty nineteen, Jackie. All right, y'all behave yourselves. Y'all be good, and we will see you very, very soon. Oops, push the wrong button. That's not good. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs> good night. Bye.